Yeah, so hello from my side. Uh, hello, everyone, uh, and welcome to our snapshot webinar today about quantum communication. Uh, my name is Stefan. I'm a physicist and I've been working as an R&D he engineer here at InfoSim for about one year. And I'm very happy to give you a brief insight into our activities on quantum communication, which is a still young field of research, but it could play an important role for secure communication in future. So I have, first I have prepared some slides and then we jump into our demo. Um, so as David mentioned, um, First, I want to give you a brief introduction to our StableNet Innovation Lab, uh, which was introduced uh, a few weeks ago by my colleague Stefan Seelbach. And uh, the Innovation Lab fosters on collaboration on cutting edge topics in an effort to define the future of network and service management. Um, we have uh, established an open innovation process and identified six main topics from AI ops, visualization, quality of experience. And another one of them is quantum communication, uh, where my focus is on. Uh, if you want to find more about the Innovation Lab, uh, you can uh, go to our website um, and there you will find uh, all further information and you can also create your own user stories uh, depending to your application. Um, for um, quantum communication, uh, uh, we have defined a first user story uh, about quantum key distribution uh, and how we use quantum key distribution as a service. This topic was involved from an ongoing uh, research project, QNET ML, uh, which is uh, funded by the German Ministry of Education and Research. And, um, one goal of the project is uh, to use machine learning for optimization of quantum key distribution, uh, especially for routing optimization and yeah, to enable the best possible key usage in a larger network scenario. But first, uh, before I start with the demo, um, I want to introduce you some basics about uh, quantum communication or um, yeah, classical versus quantum communication. So in classic communication, um, we use the information is carried in, in bits, which means in the state one or zero. And for optical transport, the bits are encoded in light pulses. It's uh, shown here um, where you have one uh, when the pulse is on or a zero if the pulse is off. And each pulse consists of a large number of photons and they are transported uh, through an optical fiber. Uh, in quantum communication, only single photons are used um, for transferring uh, information um, and the single photons, they carry the information in qubits. Um, a qubit is a little different to a normal bit because a qubit um, has like a, like a, like a, um, how to say, um, It's like a, a superposition between zero and one. So you can have all states between zero and one. And um, yeah, that's the main difference to, to classical bits. So you have a superposition, which is depicted here, uh, like uh, in uh, this blue and darker blue. Um, um, so what are applications for quantum networks? Um, though the first uh, application might be a clustering of quantum computers to increase the number of usable qubits. Um, another one is distributed quantum computing where you have uh, widely spread quantum computers and you want to connect them via a quantum network. Another application is quantum sensing, where you uh, use quantum technologies to build very sensitive or very precise sensors, which you want to connect uh, over um, yeah, a network. And our application we focus on is uh, secure quantum communication. Um, the problem is uh, that quantum computers can solve um, 
operations or can solve problems um, which a normal computer cannot do. Uh, and one of this uh, might be uh, the prime number factorization uh, um, for breaking asymmetric encryption methods. This means um, that with increasing quantum computing capabilities, most of the classical asymmetric encryption methods are no longer secure. And uh, yeah, the asymmetric or public key cryptography is widely used in our daily uh, communication. And maybe symmetric methods are more robust, but they need uh, to share the same key for encryption and decryption. And that is where quantum key distribution uh, can help us to uh, distribute these keys. But how is it working? Um, the main principle I have shown you here. So you have on one side, you have Alice, which she wants to share a message with Bob on the other side. and. Um, yeah, first you need a, a key and the key is generated in a quantum key um, device. Um, and both devices, so you, have, you need a device on the sender side and the receiver side, and both devices are connected via a quantum channel. This can be either of glass fiber or also a free space link. And you need a classical channel to also uh, exchange information between both. And then you have on top, you have your encryptor, which encrypts the message with the key and the message is transferred over a classical data channel. Um, today, there are first uh, devices also commercially available uh, here, like uh, from KeyQuant, IDQuantique or Toshiba, but most applications which are um, yeah, demonstrated yet are point to point. Um, connections uh, without a, a network topology. So the question is, what do you need for a network? Uh, in a network as an area, you have different layers um, and you need some controllers uh, to, to ensure the key distribution. One of the main or the important uh, components here is your key store, where you, where you store your keys in your devices and you can pro provide the keys to the uh, application interfaces. So what we did uh, for our demo, um, we used a um, freely available topology and information of a network and uh, tried to implement a quantum key distribution over this network with the given information. So um, yeah, our demo looks like um, shown here. So we have a, a, a geo map with uh, different cities. And in each city, we uh, placed um, our quantum key distribution devices. Um, but um, we don't have real quantum devices. So what we uh, used is a simulation. And this simulation is uh, coming from, from our research project. Uh, in the simulation, uh, we um, yeah we simulate a, a virtual QKD device, but uh, the information of the device is based on a real device. Um, we started with our topology, which we imported to StableNet. So we created our inventory. This means we have our devices, we have links, we have services. Uh, within this um, database, we also have information about demands between these single cities. Uh, these demands can uh, be static demands or dy dynamic demands. And then, uh, yeah, we, we uh, used our uh, Python simulation where we have um, our QKD device. The QKD device uh, generates keys and provides keys and the application on top uh, uses the keys to um, encrypt messages. Okay, so uh, let's uh, directly jump in uh, and see how it looks like in StableNet. Um, so first we have uh, here our um, 
our inventory where we have our network. So in this case, we have uh, tried different topologies, Germany 15, Nobel EU, US, Nobel Germany. These are different uh, topologies. You can find it all information here on this web page. Uh, then we created our uh, our devices. In this case, we have we have a, a, a geo map, meaning all these uh, German cities. In each city, we have uh, our devices. Maybe I, I have to add: uh, if the distance between two cities is uh, larger than a 100 kilometer, we have to add like a trusted node. Because otherwise, uh, the um, yeah number of photons or usable photons for our keys is too less, and um, it's not working anymore. That's also a problem for real world application. If you want to provide uh, larger distances, you need like a repeater, which is not available. So you have to implement like a trusted node as an encapsulated um, system. It's like a, a receiver and a sender unit again. Okay, then what we can do is we can uh, start our simulation uh, over a workflow job and uh, let's see what happened. Um, so here, what we first have, we have a, a workflow job which grabs the information about the demands. It's it's a dynamic demand, so the, inf the demands um, change over time. Um, maybe... I open first. Um, so here you can uh, uh, change some of the configuration parameters. So here's our uh, data we use. Uh, that's the data set name. Um, yeah, we use a Kafka messaging platform uh, to transport our data from the simulation to uh, StableNet. And um, First, start this, and then we have a second workflow job. Um, and in this workflow job, we have all parameters which are necessary for our um, yeah simulation. Uh, again, we have here where is our uh, simulation running. Uh, we have our uh, um, Kafka broker again, and uh, some parameters which are important for the simulation. Uh, here we can choose if we want to have uh, dynamic demands or static demands. I start with this dynamic demand uh, and let's start this job also. Okay, then if we want, we can jump right to our devices. Um, in the devices, we have measurements for the demands. So either we use a static demand or a dynamic demand. We have different demands between the different cities. And uh, we have on each city, we have uh, different interfaces. The interfaces are the direct links between the other uh, cities. Maybe I jump here. So this is an interface. And we have sometimes we have um, direct links where we can also have a key distribution. It's like a key service. And sometimes we don't have direct links. It's like here between Nuremberg and Hanover, where we only have uh, application running, but we have not a direct link. We need uh, to route over Frankfurt to establish a key service. Um, OK. Um, what we can do, we can also check our, our simulation parameters or the results um, if I jump in. So we have defined um, measurements for, for keys, key usage, um, how many keys our application has used over the last, um, yeah, I don't know, 100 minutes. We can start with this. Um, uh, this was an older uh, simulation I run before uh, we started today uh, to to be sure that the simulation is running. Um, um, so you can uh, look on each interface how many keys are used for the for the different um, yeah applications. Uh, we can also, within our simulation, what we also have included is like a, a routing uh, algorithm. Um, if you have applications um, and you need a routing over different uh, cities, um, this is also implemented within this um, simulation. 
And um, yeah, what we also have in our um, uh, in our web portal, um, we can look, for example, to the device geo map. Uh, all the devices have uh, geo coordinates, and um, that's also nice when we can filter on these devices. For example, if you look here um, at a tag filter. Um, uh, e equals so we have our QNAT source data. We have um, 50. And so we can directly see our network. These are all devices. We can uh, also show our links between the network. And yeah, so here you see the city uh, nodes. We have sometimes we have these trusted nodes. On each city, we have our measurements and monitors. And yeah, in principle, that's what we have implemented. Um, if we increase our demands, that's also possible within the simulation uh, that you can um, you can change your demands if you want um, to see what happened if there's maybe it's shown here, like in this red, uh, if you have uh, high demands on some links or on some devices, you can see where problems start or where you do not have enough keys to provide or you do not have enough keys for your application on these links. 